Hi, I'm Pastor Victor Hickson, changing your direction. I'm so excited that you have decided to tune into the broadcast today. You're going you're gonna to be delighted, not only delighted, you're going to be moved by the power of God. I want you to stay tuned because what's next is for you a mighty deliverance from the Word of God. Stay tuned. sacrifice. What is the living sacrifice? They give you scriptures in there. Why your sacrifice is important. The power and the results of sacrifice. There's power and results come from when you begin to sacrifice and trust God. I love this where uh, uh, seven step to success. This is what you really got to take home and read as well. Make a commitment to grow daily. Make a commitment to grow daily. Value the process more than the events. A lot of folks want to value events instead of the process. What it took for me to get to where you are today. What it took for you to get here today. Not just the church, but where you're going to go at in life. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to value the, the processes. The process is what keep us going forward. And no matter what the rain, the storm, life, whatever it may be, we're going to trust God. Don't wait to be inspired. You sitting there waiting to get uh, uh, people to pat you on the back. As long as you know you got to focus on where God is taking you, you need to stay focused there. You need to stay focused on it. Somebody say, I must stay focused. Be willing to sacrifice pleasure for opportunity. Are you willing to sacrifice pleasure for opportunity? That means you have to go there and beyond. And you got to trust God. I want, I, want, I want to see your life change. I want to live better. I want to love better. I want to serve better. And I want to give better. I want to do that. Dream big. Dream big. Dream big. I don't care what the situation may be. Dream big. What you want God to do, you got to believe God no matter what anybody say. You got to trust God. You don't have to worry about what side of the red road track you come up on. God said, I'm, I'm an all-seeing God. It doesn't matter where you come from. He said, if you're willing to serve me, I'm willing to show you that I am God. You got to turn around something. If you stay in God's face, he'll stay in your face. Huh? Plan your priorities. What is your priorities? Is everyday drama your priorities? Everyday drama on the phone, everyday drama on Facebook, everyday drama. Is that a priority to you? Well, why are you involved in it? Why are you tangling with it? Why are you wrestling with it? Why are you not believing God? When well, you got to understand something, and I want you to understand this very clearly. Learn to accept what God allowed the Holy Ghost to remove out of your life so therefore Jesus could become the center of your life and behold, all things become new. You got to learn to let some things go in order to gain. Huh? If you ain't willing to let it go, you never going to gain anywhere. I'm going to hang on to it because I need that little bit. God said I'm more than a little bit. Give up to go up. Give up to go up. What are you going to give up to go up? Huh? There's things you've got to change in your life. There are paradigms that you have to change in your life. Those things that you must change in your life in order to go forward in God. These things you're going to have to change. And that's why I'm taking the time and printing these out. I'm taking the time to do the study so you could be inspired. And not only inspired, you could begin to grow. You could begin to grow in the things that God have called you to grow into. 
Every day I'm looking for a change. I don't care how old I get. I'm looking to grow every day. I want to grow intentionally. I don't know about you. I'm making a commitment to change my heart and develop my mind. I will not be changed and allow the circumstances that are around me to change me. If I'm going to live better, I have to not only live better, I got to talk better. I got to believe it when nobody else believes it. I have to walk by faith and not by sight. You can't hold me down. Your words that used to bother me and hold me down, they do not keep me in prison anymore because I've been set free and delivered by the power of God. If I'm going to live better, I'm going to eat better. If I'm going to be, lead better, I'm going to read better. I'm going to take the time to build my spirit, man. I'm going to take the time to walk with Jesus. I'm going to take the time to pray that I'm able to do what he called me to do. Coming out of some things. If I want to be successful, I got to think successful. Somebody said, well, you may, you, 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 you're arrogant. No, the Bible said that, mm, look what the Bible says. I come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Don't get upset because I'm, I'm, I'm understanding scripture. Don't get upset because I'm believing God for a miracle. Don't get upset because I, my mind is focused on God and not the drama. Don't get upset because I don't go to the places which you were, we used to go. Don't get upset because I decide that I'm, I made up in my mind I'm tired of being sick and tired. I made up in my mind that I'm going to start living better for the glory of God. I made up in my mind I'm not going to be a liar anymore. I made up in my mind I'm not going to be a cheater anymore. I made up in my mind that I'm going to begin to live the life that God have intended for me to live. And one thing I want you to understand, don't think you're too old to begin to start living. The world tell you at this age and that age, and you should be doing this at that age, but let me tell you, God is the only God that can turn back the hand of time. He said the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm destroy, I'm going to go back and add those to you, because why? You are now beginning to live better. You better tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to live better. I don't know about you, but I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to me. I want to live better. I not only live better, I want to do better. I want to do better about my seniors. I want to do better about myself. I want to treat myself better. How are you going to live better if you don't treat yourself better? How are you going to treat somebody else better when you don't know how to treat yourself? If I'm going to live better, I'm going to begin to read scriptures. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to learn what the word says about my family. I'm going to learn what the word says about me. I'm giving you valuable information that's going to change your life. If you don't want to change your life, there's nothing else you, there's nothing I can do for you. The God that we serve is not going to invade your life. All he's saying that I'm here. Once you make up your mind, he said, knock at the door. Good God Almighty. Matthew 7 and 7 says, seek and you shall find. Knock and he will answer. I don't know about you. He can answer me every day. Every time I knock at the door, he answer. Every challenge, he, he answer. Every difficult situation, he answer. Every adversity. The problem is that with 90% of the stuff that happened to us, 10% how are you going to react to it? How are you going to react to it? Stop getting angry all the time. Learn how to love the hell out your enemy. If you ever want to start growing, I can know if you grow because you need to learn how to start praying for your enemy. If you tell me you can pray for that one that don't like you, that means the growth is taking place. That means your mind is being set. Your heart is being delivered. That means you're getting ready to walk in the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be tied up and tangled up and wrestling with foolishness all day. There's only 24 hours in a day, eight hours you need to get some rest, eight hours of work, and guess what? You're starting a new day. But you got to remember there's worship time in the midst of all of that. Your day should start out with worship. With a word for you, walk out the door. If you just got to say the 23rd Psalm, Lord, it's my shepherd. See, you got to turn around and say, Lord, whatever I can't handle today, you're going to go ahead and handle that situation because I'm going to live better. I'm going to live stress-free. The folks that's on my job that just keep getting on my last nerve, I'm going to learn how to love them first. And when I learn how to love them and they see that the things and the conversation can't hold me down no longer, I'm getting ready to move to the next dimension in my life. Folks come to church and want to get delivered, can't get delivered because you're sitting here with a, with a company you come in already messed up.
Come on, I want to live better. Can't get out of nothing because you're always going back to the same old mess. If you're going to live better, you, get to get, you have to get some folks out from around you. You got to find some new friend that who care about you and not what you have. Who care about you as an individual and not what, how much money you got. Who care enough about you to call you and say how you are doing without anything attached to it. Huh? Final reflection. You need to, read, you need to take time and, and I printed it for you to take time. Pray for salvation. Pray for salvation. Salvation is free. You don't have to pay for nobody about no salvation. It's already free. The power of prayer. Good God Almighty. And then it says the day's word for families in obedience. I gave you a pastor, I gave you a letter from the pastor also. You take time and, and look at it over that. Look it over. I'm speaking from my heart so you could get delivered. I'm speaking. See, folks don't get folks don't get delivered because they hung up on stuff that they should have let go. You hanging on to your mama mess. You hanging on to what your daddy mess is. You hanging on to the hap, you know, to, to this family, that family, and what happened 30, 40 years ago before you even came into holding on to stuff to my I want to live better. When you start living better, you just can't love anybody. You can't just love the people you want to love. That's what's wrong with the church today. We only want to be around folks that look like us, shout like us, sing like us, dance like us, talk like us. And as soon as somebody come in and, and different, and you, you don't even know if God's son or angel just to see how you react. You're going to size me up as soon as I walk through the door anyway. You're going to try to figure out where I come from anyway. With technology, I wouldn't doubt you go ahead and text and, and put the phone and Google it while you're sitting there in the church. Huh? Prior this, prior that. We all come from somewhere. We all got some skeletons and some closets. Huh? But I'm going to live better. I'm not going to gossip better. I'm going to live better. I'm not going to lie better. I'm going to live better. I'm going to lead God for what he says in the book of Philippians. It's a divine appointment that you are watching this program right now. Healing, power, deliverance, and prophetic impartation are yours right now. Are you ready to receive it right now? It's time to move your life to the next level right now. I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to receive my healing. I want you to understand that we serve an awesome God. Do I have a witness in this house? But let me tell you, if you build up your praise and whenever you get in trouble, you already... You can make a withdrawal from the presence and the power of God. Right here at Full Deliverance Baptist Church, our mission is simple, to bring you into the transforming presence of God. Each and every week, lives are being changed, families are being restored, and destiny is being fulfilled. And we want to invite you to be a part of all that God is doing through His church. Join us for a visit to one of our worship services so you can experience an environment full of God's power. When you do, we want to sow a special gift into your life. On this program, you only saw a small portion of the message preached by Pastor Hickson. When you visit with us, we will give you this entire message on your choice of CD or DVD absolutely free as our way of saying thank you for visiting. When you arrive, simply let the person that greets you know that you are a first-time visitor and give them the name of the message you see on your screen. So make your plans to visit with us right here at Full Deliverance Baptist Church. Our location, website, and service times are on the screen. You, your family, your future are important to God. In this series, The Power of Sacrifice, we're going to learn the importance of sacrifice. We're going to learn what sacrifice is all about. Amen. I want to live better so I can serve God better and serve myself better. Yes. Some folks don't even realize that you 60 years and 70 years is nothing compared to eternal life. That's right. My desire is to live better. Yes. Live better means that I want to become stress-free. Yes. Live better simply means that I'm not going to hold on to yesterday a bitter experience. The experience that I experienced yesterday, those things, Paul said, I forget those things which are 
that are behind me, but I press forward. I press for the high calling. I press for the mark and the high calling of Christ. That's what we got to do. You got to press. I don't care what it looks like. You got to keep pressing your way. I don't care what they're saying about you. Keep pressing your way. I don't care what your haters saying about you. Keep loving them anyhow. Because you can turn around and say, in a little while. Yeah. In a little while. He said, it make my enemy become my footstool. In a little while. Not for me to glorify over it because I'm giving you and I don't know why I'm giving you because why? I done prayed. And God said, of all thy ways pleases thee, I will make your enemy be at peace with you. That's the problem. We got to start pleasing God. When you start pleasing God, you'll stop worrying about what you do. You'll stop trying to figure out what somebody's saying about you. You'll learn how to love them anyhow. That's the biggest problem that we have. If you learn how, if you, he said, not only that, another scripture, he said, if all thy ways pleases thee, he simply said that I will grant the desires of your heart. But what you got to realize is that if I'm going to get anywhere, I'm going to, first of all, I have to get myself right with God, stand before God. When I stand before him, I love him regardless of what, and I give my all in all because, why? Well, I want to change. I want to live better. I don't know about you, but you get tired of being broke. You get tired of living from week to week. You get tired of living from month to month. You get tired. Well, why don't you start straightening out your life? Why don't you believe God? Why don't you begin to pay your tithe? And why don't you begin to trust him and make the sacrifice? Because the little become much when you place it in the master's hand. You got to realize that whatever the small amount that I'm able to give, I'm able to give it right now and I'm giving it with gladness. I'm trusting God. And when I'm trusting God, I'm not here to try to please man. The problem is that when you come into the body of Christ, you can't sit here and worry about trying to satisfy this person and that person. There's one individual you need to satisfy. That's Jesus Christ. Because when you get the Holy Ghost, you will not be hard to be dealt with. When you, refill, when you receive the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be obedient to the one that has rule and authority over you. You'll walk with authority. The reason why we can't walk with power because we don't know how to be obedient to God, number one. We don't know how to be obedient to ourselves. We don't know how to trust God and believe him for obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Folks, you give them something to do, they get up and you give them one thing on the program to do. They get up and say the Holy Spirit told them to do something else. Stop lying on the Holy Ghost. And be Because the Holy Spirit does not operate out of side of itself. Whether you believe it or not, the Holy Spirit is subject to the one that over the house. It's up for the pastor to yield to the Holy Spirit. And once he yield to the Holy Spirit, then you understand about the sacrifice. Some Sundays I can't get up and preach because I yield to the Holy Spirit. I don't care how much I prepare. That was good for, that was good for me to get strengthened all week long. When the Holy Spirit take over, then you'll learn how to start living better. And not your spirit always taking over, but the Holy Spirit take over. Holy Spirit, grab a hold to my gossip tongue and pull it out of my mouth. You're going to begin to live better. You got to learn how to speak to your neighbor. If you're going to begin to love better, you got to learn how to forgive folks and give, forgive yourself. Forgiveness brings power. Sacrifice. I don't know if I could ever speak to her. Just don't know what she did with me and Clinton. You done graduated from school 40 years ago and you still thinking about that Holding on to Clinton. Yes. Still holding on to it. He dead and gone and you still holding to it. People dead and gone, y'all still holding on to mess. Ain't going to give you no power. Ain't going to give you nothing to stand on. Ain't going to give you nothing to believe in. Ain't going to give you nothing to walk by faith and not by sight. If you're going to get ready to walk by faith and not by sight, you cannot look at the circumstances. You got to look at the word. If the word says I'm healed, I got to believe no matter what the word says. If the word says I'm delivered, I'm, 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 I'm being delivered from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. It may not look like it, but I'm telling you, I'm trusting God. When I'm trusting God, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. One thing that you got to understand about the word of God, he said that I make whatever God says, he's able to perform it. Stop looking for man to perform it. God said, I'm the one that healeth thee. 
I'm looking for a change. A change don't come until you start ready, till you bow down for a change. A change don't come until when you say enough is enough. A change don't come when you start saying, I'm tired of abusing my mind and my heart. I want to change. Somebody going to judge you because you're changing. That's all right. Yea, doubtless. Uh -huh. And I count all things but loss. Yes, this for, is Paul. For, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Paul said that Paul was speaking. He was speaking and letting them know he's speaking to the church. Everything that I gained, everything that I thought were, every, but, I, I, but I counted, it's worthless. Because my purpose is gaining the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Can I get a little help? My purpose is to gain the knowledge of Christ. When we as believers get into the knowledge of gaining the word of God, we're going to begin to move in things and places where you never thought you would be. Some of you are living in situations and you say, well, I've been trying to ask God to bring me out. God said I'll bring you out, but the thing is, you must seek his face. Paul is telling them in Philippians, he said, I, I want to let y'all know that all the things and all the knowledge that I had, everything that I had, everything that I had before I met Christ on the road of Damascus, and when I met him on the road of Damascus, I want you to understand something. Now I have found my purpose. I have found my destiny. I have found the reason why I was here. And he said, I find, I find it. Can I get a little help here? I find it. Just, it's not worth it. All the things that I thought had value didn't have no value at all. All the things I thought was, 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 was going to be meaningful didn't have any meaning at all. I find that it has no strength. I find that it has no power. I find that it has no joy. I find out that I can't get any rest. And some of you can't get rest because you're chasing after the wrong thing. When you start chasing after Jesus, if you could chase after that man, you you better start chasing after the man that went on the cross for you. Or you're chasing after that woman, you better start chasing after the man that went on the cross for you. We live in a society now, we're chasing after anything as long as it's flesh and say, hello, you want to get it. Paul said, I find that it, 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 it's worthless. It's, it's, it's not what I thought it were. It's not, it didn't give me no, it gave me fleshly and, and earthly satisfaction. But now I'm seeking for the power of who he is. The one that's stricken me off my horse on the road of Damascus. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I know that I got to know him when he stricken me off my horse. And there were scales that went over my eyes and I was blind and couldn't see. And all I heard was a voice from heaven say, said, So, while thou, for, while thou persecute me. And I replied and said, Who thou Lord? He said, I replied and said, Who thou Lord? And Ananias had to, Ananias had to take the, the not only Ananias, Ananias, God went to Ananias and told Ananias, I want you to go. And when you're going to go on the road of Damascus and their soul is there and I want you to pray for him and the scales will fall from his eye. Ananias said, hold up. This man reputation preceded him. This man reputation preceded him. And you want me to go pray for him? Yes, I want you to go pray for him. Yes, I want you to go and pray for him. Because why? He will suffer many things for my sake. For my name's sake, he will suffer many things. As soon as the devil he just holler boo at us, we are Lord, Jesus. Oh God, I'm going through something. Our light afflictions would never compare to the joy that he brings. 
our light of affliction will never you, church are you in your light afflictions these are light affliction and she don't like me just looked at me and didn't say a word didn't even give me a smile today I ain't going back to church light afflictions light afflictions Paul said I want to get to know him because everything that I have gained and the five languages that I speak doesn't compare to getting to know who he is I'm talking about living better Ooh, good God my affinity coming on I'm talking about living better let us continue I'm talking about getting better See, you ain't going to start living until you get Jesus on the inside. Once you start getting Jesus on the inside, your yesterday bitter experience, your yesterday hurt, the healing in your body, when you get somebody say, I got Jesus. I said, I got Jesus. Paul said, I got Jesus. I got him in my heart. I got him in my hands. Got him in my feet. Somebody say, I got him all over all over I got them all over me I don't know about you but I just can't hold my peace good God of mine I can't sit there and be still I'm talking to somebody in here if you look if they were, if they were to tell them where you come from they'll look at you like you're crazy but have you ever been tied up and tangled up but when you call on his name I said when I call on his name there's power in that name there's healing in that name there's joy in that name. There's deliverance in that name. Somebody need a breakthrough, you can get a breakthrough in that name. You don't have to pay for the breakthrough. If you begin to call Jesus, begin to call him no matter how it sound like, you don't have to have the music or the choir behind. Just begin to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. In a little while, I said in a little while, you keep on calling that name. You keep on calling that name. To request a copy of today's broadcast, call us at 1-855-NOW-FAITH. That's 1-855-669-3248. Or visit our website at changingyourdirection.org. Write to us at 101 South Redland Road, Florida City, Florida, 33034. Full Deliverance Ministries, where little becomes much when you place it in the Master's hand, is changing your direction the victorious way. Hi, I'm Pastor Victor Hickson. We're out of time, but I want you to join us on social media and other media outlets. We're there for you. We're praying for you. I want to just encourage you to encourage someone else. Make this message a part of your library. God bless you. Thank you for your support and your prayers as we continue to reach a nation for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you next week at this time, changing your direction.